Let's examine the three types of endocytosis. Phagocytosis, receptor-mediated endocytosis, and bulk phase endocytosis, also called pinocytosis. Phagocytosis, or cell feeding, is a type of endocytosis where the cell ingests larger solid substances, such as viruses, bacteria, or even worn out or dead cells. Cells in the body that are capable of phagocytosis are called phagocytes. They include white blood cells, such as neutrophils and macrophages, that are important for the body's immune defense and help prevent infectious disease. So how does this process work? In this diagram, a bacterial cell is being taken into a white blood cell through phagocytosis. Receptors on the white blood cell membrane recognize the bacterium as being a foreign cell, which triggers the production of finger-like extensions of the white blood cell's membrane called pseudopods that surround the microbe. As the membrane fuses around the bacterium, a vesicle called a phagosome, or feeding body, is produced and delivers the microbe into the cell. Next, the cell's digestive organelles, the lysosomes, fuse with the phagosome and release their digestive enzymes. These enzymes surround the bacterium and begin to chemically digest it, breaking it down into small chemical building blocks, wastes, and nutrients. The white blood cell can digest the nutrients, but any indigestible materials are stored in a vesicle called a residual body or are exported out of the cell through exocytosis. Phagocytosis is not a selective process. A wide variety of chemicals and cells can be ingested. This is in direct contrast to receptor-mediated endocytosis, which is extremely specific in what it brings into a cell, like a kid who is a picky eater. In this process, the cell ingests specific chemicals from the ECF that it needs to function. We previously discussed these chemicals called ligands, which are specific to membrane protein receptors on the cell membrane. Examples of ligands include vitamins, antibodies, some hormones, transferrin used to carry iron in the blood during hemoglobin recycling, and low-density lipoproteins, or LDLs, which are proteins that carry lipids through the blood. This example shows a cell ingesting LDLs through receptor-mediated endocytosis. The first step in the process is the binding of the ligand to a specific membrane protein receptor. The LDLs are carrying cholesterol through the blood plasma and bind to their specific receptors on the membrane. Once they bind, they form what are called LDL receptor complexes. The receptors are concentrated in regions of the cell membrane called clathrin-coated pits. Clathrin is a protein that attaches to the membrane on the cytoplasmic side. As the LDLs bind to the receptors, the clathrin molecules start weaving together into a basket-like structure. This causes the membrane to invaginate, and the vesicle begins to develop, trapping the LDLs within it. Next, the form vesicle is surrounded by a layer of clathrin proteins and is now called a clathrin-coated vesicle that traps the LDLs within it as it moves into the cytoplasm. Once it's in the cytoplasm, it loses its clathrin coat and becomes an uncoated vesicle. The released clathrin molecules return to the inner surface of the cell membrane and help form more clathrin-coated pits. Next, the uncoated vesicle fuses with another vesicle called an endosome. As their membranes fuse together, the LDLs are released from their receptors, which move to the outer edges of the endosome. Finger-like protrusions pinch off the endosome and enclose the receptors in transport vesicles that return them to the cell membrane for reuse. 
In the final step, transport vesicles containing the LDLs move into lysosomes and their contents fuse together, like in phagocytosis. The lysosome's digestive enzymes break down the LDL's proteins into amino acids and its lipids into fatty acids and cholesterol. The cell can now use these various chemicals for macromolecule synthesis or ATP generation. The third type of endocytosis is called bulk phase endocytosis or pinocytosis. The word bulk means large quantities. This is a process that is not just taking in one specific type of extracellular solute or microbe. It is taking in enormous quantities of chemicals found within the surrounding ECF. That's why it's also called pinocytosis. The prefix pino means to drink because the cell is taking a sip of the ECF through a vesicle formed from its cell membrane. You can remember this name if you are a wine drinker and enjoy taking a sip of a Pinot Grigio every now and then. This process is non-selective and does not require membrane receptors. Any of the dissolved solutes in the surrounding ECF are ingested through bulk phase endocytosis. In the diagram, a cell is taking a sip of the ECF and ingesting the dissolved solutes as the vesicle forms around these materials. Like the other processes, the vesicle fuses with a lysosome and the solutes are broken down through digestion by enzymes and then released into the cytoplasm to be used by the cell. Bulk phase endocytosis is common throughout many of the body cells especially in cells that function in absorption, such as in the kidneys and intestinal cells.